Today, I want to talk about the indie animated series Spooky Month, which is free to watch right here on YouTube, so go check it out if you haven't already. Or else be warned that we are going to seriously spoil the lore here, because this show is so much more complex and deep than it appears at first. Especially when you take a look at their post credit scenes, which are only posted to Newgrounds instead of here on YouTube. My name is Deep Cut, welcome back to Cartoon Universe, hit that subscribe button for more indie cartoon theories and lore, and let's dive into this. Now, years ago, Spooky Month started off as a short animation less than two minutes in length that focused on two kids named Skid and Pump who were obsessed with Halloween and thus celebrate all of October as Spooky Month. The first episode was really short, and it wasn't intended to be some full-length series as far as I understand it, but as the audience grew and responded to each new episode, it became more and more serious, with there being an overarching plot of a mysterious cult that is terrorizing the small town that these two kids live in, and those two kids finding themselves at the very center of it all. To start, I want to break down the bare bones plot introduced in the first few shorts to give you an idea of just how simple this started before Senor Pillow began to elevate the story to the next level. Episode 1, if it can even be called an episode, focused mostly on introducing a whole bunch of spooky themed gags that at the time were meant to be random, I believe. For important plots and characters that recur, episode 1 introduced us first to Skid's mom being attacked by a mysterious devil-looking murderer who seemed to stop attacking her because he wants to do the spooky month dance like Skid and his mother. The kids also would meet a mysterious man who is constantly doing strange criminal acts in his creepy white van, and very interestingly, use a spirit board to summon the demon Moloch. Episode 2 was not much longer than Episode 1 was at only 6 minutes in length, but it had some of these side characters from before recur, as well as introduced other new concepts to the show, seemingly as one-off gags yet again, but of course they would begin to recur as well. While the first episode was just a montage of random Halloween fun gags, this episode had something closer to an actual plot, but opened with Skid again just getting ready to celebrate Spooky Month, as robbers are trying to steal something from his home. He doesn't worry about them since it's spooky month and decides to just head out, passing Moloch on the way, who is still trapped in the attic, halfway through his spirit board portal. As soon as Skid finds Pump outside, they meet the strange man with his mysterious van, which this time is an ice cream truck, before going off to meet a scary It-inspired clown. About halfway through this episode, however, the story cuts away from the random Halloween gags like from the first episode, and instead it focuses on the introduction of what will ultimately become the large connecting plot point of the season, a mysterious house. Skid and Pump are sent there by a bully who hopes that by going into the creepy house, something bad will happen to the kids. When they get there, however, a dangerous stranger is ready to abduct them, but they are rescued by an even more insane horror, an eldritch abomination, who claims to be the eyes of the universe. The monster is won over by the kid's love for all things spooky, and has some fun with them before hurting the bullies that tried to harm them. And the episode ends with this seeming like just another random gag in a YouTube series that is all about silly Halloween humor. But this monster warns Skid and Pump to watch the stars, and this has interesting significance going forward. From here, the episodes get longer, enough to feel like they contain solid plots, with episode 3 being 10 minutes long, and episodes 4, 5, and 6 being legit 20 minute episodes. Episode 3 deals largely with the plot of Moloch, who says that for two years he has been stuck in the attic. Unfortunately, Leela thinks that the sounds Moloch is making while trying to escape is a rat and calls an exterminator to try and kill it. The exterminator unfortunately becomes possessed by Moloch, and is tricked into twisting his own neck by the end of the episode, killing the body that he is trapped in. And thus the story ends with everything working out. And though Moloch will recur again later, what really made this episode so interesting was the post credit scene that was found only on Newgrounds. While the first two episodes also had post credit scenes, they didn't really do too much to advance the story forward, with the first one just being Moloch dancing, and the second one just being the cops noticing the strange eldritch monster returning to his haunted mansion. The third post credit scene picks up with the cops investigating the mansion now, only to find a mysterious cult performing a ritual there in strange red robes. Among the cultists is the creepy clown that was randomly introduced in episode 2, and as the series progresses we'll find more and more people are connected to this mansion and the cult. 
This cult is clearly associated with the Eldritch Monster, who claims to be the eyes of the universe, and as the story progresses, it becomes clear that they are behind all the spooky nonsense that is happening in town, and that they are specifically targeting Leela and Skid, who seem to be connected to the cult in some way, probably through Skid's mysteriously missing father. You see, one thing that is clear early on is that Leela is a single mom. While this was probably initially done to not have to worry about writing a new dad character into the very short original short, it is one of the many randomly introduced plot points that Senior Pello has added depth to by attaching them to the overarching narrative. Around Leela's house, you don't actually see any photos of the father, with all the photos downstairs being of Leela and her son Skid, but in almost every episode we go to the attic and see something of his, and he seems to be tied to the mysterious cult based on what we see there. Way back in episode 1, the first thing we know to be up there is the spirit board, which is something Leela would have no reason to own herself. But in addition to that spirit board, we also see the top half of a mannequin and a mysterious giant spider whip, both of which become extremely relevant in later episodes. Episode 2 doesn't show us anything new in the attic itself, but it plants the seed that something important is up there, with the opening gag being about the two robbers trying to steal something from Skid's home. Episode 2 ended with them being arrested, but in Episode 3, a mysterious cult member is seen waiting for the police to leave the station where the robbers are being held, and in Episode 6, they even try to rob Leela again, not finding exactly what they wanted, but knowing that they were in the right place when they reached the stuff that belonged to Skid's father hidden in the attic. In this latest episode that just came out a few days ago, they are scared away by the appearance of a giant spider, which, if you look back, has been hiding in the background of the show for quite a while, and his connection to everything is so much more crazy than you might think. All the way back in episode 1, when summoning Moloch, the mannequin in the background can be seen moving, hinting at someone like the spider controlling it. In episode 3, when Leela is worried about there being a rat when Moloch is making noise, you can see a spider running across the screen as we pan up to the attic. It moves so fast that it looks like they almost want you to miss it, but once it's off screen, suddenly we see the mannequin moving on its own again, as if the spider just got there to control it. Now, episode 4 focuses on a talking doll similar to Chucky called a Happy Fella doll, who tries to murder the kids. To hide from him, Leela takes the kids into the attic, where we see one of a few photos around that contain Skid's father, but with all of them having the face torn off. Here, the mannequin mysteriously falls over again, likely from the spider pushing it to protect Leela, Skid, and Pump. As the mannequin smashes the doll's head, we can even see the spider up on the ceiling, perhaps having used its webs to pull the mannequin over. Now, episode 5 had a strong self-contained plot similar to the Happy Fella doll, but this one brought us back to the story from episode 1 and tied it into the mysterious cult. This episode had the return of the mysterious killer from episode 1, who conveniently stopped trying to kill Leela when she gave him candy. In this episode, it is revealed that he was distracted long enough for Leela to call the police, who arrested him. Like the robbers, however, he was released from the prison by the cult, where he immediately returns to get Leela and her kid. Not only does this murderer seem to be after her because he is connected to the cult, but what's really crazy is that while hiding in the attic from the murderer, we can see one of the cultist robes on the shelf with the stuff that belonged to Skid's dad, indicating his connection to the cult as well. The episode ends with the murderer being arrested, but as Leela shows a picture of herself as a kid on Halloween to Skid, he notices that the man in the background of her photo is the same man that tried to kill them that night, meaning this cannibal with ties to the cult had been waiting to kill Leela since she was just a little girl. This implies that her significance goes well beyond the killer, since he never went for the kill when she was younger, with Leela being seen as important to the cult for some reason, and thus, someone that he couldn't kill. The post credit scenes reveal that the killer was in fact part of the cult, with him having one of these special necklaces that they all wear, which makes the police officer realize that the murderer is connected to the cult that he had been investigating. But finally, all of these different plot elements came together in the most insane way with the recent release of Episode 6, which came with not just crazy lore but also a heartbreaking look into the minds of the characters. You see, after kicking out those robbers again, Leela is feeling stressed. She seems constantly under attack from the murderers and robbers, and she just wants to take care of her son. Pump, meanwhile, is missing his parents, and is sad when he realizes that they aren't calling him yet again. In previous episodes, Pump had bragged about how his sister couldn't tattle on him because the parents never answer the phone when she calls, 
but in this episode it becomes more serious, with it having been a very long time since they have even heard from their parents. It is their grandpa who takes care of him and his sister, and by the end of the episode, we see that he is buying fake gifts for Pump and pretending that they are from his parents, not letting Pump know that his parents seemingly abandoned him or might even be dead. The episode focuses on the kids meeting a priest who was randomly introduced in an earlier episode as a hater of Halloween because of the demonic indulgence it brings. The story becomes about him convincing the kids to go and ask everyone that they have annoyed to give them forgiveness in order to make their parents proud of them, as both are feeling like they are either causing their parents stress, as with Skid, or have somehow pushed their parents out of their lives entirely, like with Pump. Eventually, they meet the police officers and they explain that their parents are proud of them even even if they don't put on the act of wanting forgiveness, but Pump very sadly questions why his parents aren't around then, and this just broke my heart. This scene here really shows the power that cartoons tend to have over the live-action medium. These characters are caricatures, they are simple molds and symbols that embody fun ideas such as simply being goofy and liking Halloween, and yet little details about their lives that were likely thrown in without much thought at all are then exploited against the silly atmosphere to make you feel so much pain over a child being abandoned by his parents or just not knowing that they are dead. And that emotional resonance was only half of the greatness of this episode, with the rest playing really strongly into the overarching story and connecting all the dots for us. This episode's focus is on the priest helping the kids find forgiveness, as I said, but he ends up being this total badass who suddenly gets sucked into the weird culty happenings that surround the kids when they take him to a hospital that they said is full of zombies. This hospital contains the morgue that holds the body of the exterminator from way back in episode 3 who is possessed by Moloch, and he is now able to escape the body that he was trapped in. The priest chases Moloch down, making it back to the house of Skid, where they inevitably throw down in the attic, and he defeats Moloch. However, the priest is ambushed when he returns to his church and finds the cult there waiting for him. The cult takes him back to the mansion and opens a door directly to none other than the Abomination of Eyes from Episode 2, the god that they worship. Next, the YouTube episode ends with us simply seeing from the spider's perspective in the attic, where he picks up the mannequin that was knocked over during the battle between Moloch and the priest. Finally, we have the post credit scene found only on Newgrounds, which tied together the last of the mystery. Here, the robbers are shown as being members of the cult, who were sent in to steal something, but as they explain, they were scared away by the spider. Now, having just seen through the spider's eyes, it's hard not to notice the imagery of the cultists, particularly their necklaces which you could say look quite a bit like a spider. They of course worship the abomination that says it's the eyes of the universe, having many eyes just like the many eyes of the spider that we just saw through. While the abomination of eyes is mostly tentacles, you can also see coming from its head are many spider-like legs, identical to the spider in the attic. Now tying all of this together is the photo we see early in episode 6 after the robbers have been kicked out of the house, when Skid is asking his mother if she is moving his dad's stuff in order to sell it. He picks up a photo which, like the rest we have seen, has his face torn out, but we can mysteriously see one of the spider legs coming out from behind his head. It seems obvious to me at this point that the spider itself is Skid's father, and that he was puppeting the mannequin perhaps, but at some point he had to fake his own death to protect Leela and his son from the cult that he came from. This is why all of the cult stuff is still there, and by pretending to simply be a spider, he is able to watch over his son and the woman he loves while also protecting them like he did when he knocked the mannequin over on the Happy Fella doll. Even around the Haunted Mansion, we see photos that have the head cropped out of the shot so we can't see the face, just like with every photo of Skid's father having his face torn out. And in the episode 6 post credit scene, we can specifically see that the man in the photos at the mansion is wearing a green ring just like Skid's father is wearing in his photo with him from the beginning of the episode. His particular position for his photo in the mansion indicates that he was an important member there, and probably not an actual human like a lot of them appear to be. With that in mind, here's Here's my theory for what is actually going on here. The Abomination is essentially the god of their universe, and it would seem that his son was supposed to target a specific human woman to be the vessel for a child of both the Eldritch God line and the human line, playing into the myths of the union between divine gods or angels and humans. Skid seems to be that child of both lines, not as a good thing, but as a sacrifice, explaining why it is Moloch in particular who is after him, with Moloch being a demon from the Bible that children were sacrificed to, and who, in the show, seems to specifically be after Skid and Pump, 
as well as the cult that surrounds him, with cults of course being well known for their sacrificial rituals in these kinds of stories. But what do you guys think? Have I cracked the code here, or is there even more crazy twists coming that will completely recontextualize what we know about Skid's father and the lore of Spooky Month? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, and I'll see you guys next time.